if you go to Africa, the Nigerian cinema is nowadays the largest movie makers of the world. The United States produces 611 films per year. India produces around 900. Nigeria produces 1,200 movies. And the interesting thing is, all that happened without Nigeria having a copyright law. Nigerians are uh, what? in excess of about 120, 130, some say 150 million people. One in five black people in the world is a Nigerian, one in four Africans is a Nigerian, so there's quite a lot of people here. And for a large group like that, not to have any kind of you know, con connection with any kind of audiovisual expression that is peculiar to them, there's a gap in the market. Everybody's looking to Hollywood, they're selling a lot of sex, a lot of violence, violence and all that. We don't make movies like that. We make movies that have genuine human stories, that have real family values, respect, you know, respect for elders, you know, love for one another, accommodation, you know, a whole lot of stuff, you know. We don't celebrate killing and all that, we don't do that. We do make movies that make a difference. As a Christian, I have always believed in sharing. Thank you very much. My right hand of fellowship. <laughs> We can't go to the LA film schools, but we can tell our stories with our own pictures. Oh, they look atrocious, they are, the acting is horrible and all that, but it's at least it's, it's piecing together the stories. So, first job. The first job we have. The American market, they definitely have set the pace for most people. They are the, probably the most advanced in the world. That's accepted. You know, but my people say you can't be taller than me and shorter than me at the same time. You gotta decide what you wanna do. So we'll give them, you know, best in the world. Yes, you take that. You take the high end of the market. You take the biggest things in the market, but there's a lot of room to play somewhere else. And we occupy that space quite gladly. The economics of making movies on celluloid or 35 millimeters would never work in Africa, would never work in Nigeria. We don't have the structures to support that, we don't have anything to support that. Nigeria has been the first country in the world to accept and you know, develop um, digital video as an origination format for future films. Nigeria was the first country in the world to make direct to video as the first line of release. The Americans are coming to that now. DVD has essentially saved the, the, the studios in Hollywood. But Nigeria went there first. When a film is released, everybody only looks at the uh, executive producer, the person who puts down the money to make the film and reproduce. But the copyright aspect has not really been explored. But we are now trying to give effect or give meaning to that aspect. We have been able to, to start to create that culture of respect for copyright. <laughs> This market is a Alaba International market. Nationwide, everybody knows about the market. We also have like uh, all these bottles talking about. The producers are inside the market, so you cannot go and parade their work. The association they will arrest you, so we don't parade Nigerian movies. You can parade uh, foreign movies or those things. Foreign is okay. Since the producer is not here, you can go outside and produce and come and sell at your own price. So that's just the Piracy has an interesting connotation in Nigeria because see, people tend to think that, oh well, it's criminals who want to do this, people would rather buy the counterfeit copy and cheap copy and all that. The counterfeit copy in Nigeria costs just as much as the genuine copy, so it's not about the money. You know, whether you're buying the counterfeit or you're buying the genuine one, it's going to cost you the same. And that piracy, again, doesn't occur until the genuine copy becomes available. So if we make the effort to put the genuine copy at the time of release in front of the public and they have all bought genuine copies, I wonder who then will be buying the pirate copies. We're also trying to provide solutions to that situation that creates the piracy rather than you know, just pursue people who are counterfeiting kind of things all over the place. You know. If I convict a pirate, the pirate will not put money in my pocket. 
Rather, he, he will still continue to spend my money that I pay to government as tax. Government will have to feed him. Government will have to clothe him and take care of him even while in prison. We don't want to look at things from the negative angle. We want to approach it from the positive angle. And as we go along, we remove all forms of negativity. Copyright is not about stopping people from using your work, but getting them to use your work legally and giving you money for what they have done with your work. <laughs>because you know when it was up to send a few people to decide what was to show in the cinemas in the US and all that yes they could keep you out but now everybody's up on the internet you can access anything you want anywhere you want you know from anywhere in the world so if i've got product that's valid for guys abroad i can reach them from here society is the biggest competitor for hollywood for the music industry for the publishing industry so you have this new competitor that is everyone else so the law has been consistently changed in the past, say, uh, 12 years in order to protect certain very specific interests, especially for the North American uh, cultural industry, in order to prevent society from becoming the producer of culture in itself and for itself.